Hey guys, Criticaster here, and today we're going to look over or kind of like react to the June 28th headline for today. There's a lot of interesting stuff in it, um, like a new class, for instance, but there's also like a whole bunch of different AC scratches, a whole bunch of revival ones as well, a whole bunch of free cosmetics. Um, it seems like this next month is going to be a whole bunch of that, as well as a whole bunch of like extra boosts and campaigns going on. So let's uh, go into it, shall we? Okay, let's see what we got here. July. At the anniversary event, the 6th, okay. See, so yeah, there's some of the artwork there. That looks pretty. Add new different mags, additional limited time tasks. Okay, this is just like the usual seasonal event stuff. Wait, what was that? The PSO2 manga memory. So it sounds like there's going to be another thing, kind of like the PSO2 Kami or the Raggle memories, where we'll be able to get some cosmetics from the manga, I, I guess. That would be interesting. It looks like you can get that from getting the holographs um, during the seasonal event. A uh, new field race in South Alio. I mean, these haven't really been too exciting. They're like fun to do once, but. It looks like it's a little bit different though. That's good. What the? <laughs> Peppy Rappy. Okay. Um, so daytime exploit. So it sounds like based off the time of day. All right. So there's a, there is a scratch ticket, which I was guessing there was going to be. Uh, there's a different mag form, like usual. Uh, Rappy Glide, the color variant. Um, some stamps. Uh, evil orbit, uh, weapons. I believe this is kind of going to be like what the, what evil eclipse. This is just like a, another version of it. Um, I can't really tell if it was lightning or not. They kind of went through it real quick. All right. So it looks like this time around, it does not have an element. Um, see, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing these are going to be exactly like evil eclipse, but, um, just like a different way to get them through like a seasonal event instead. So they have like a little bit different look. They might have a different potential as well, but we will see. Dread enemies spawn faster. So it looks like we'll be doing some of that during the event. Oh, there, there's the Emperor Happy. I like getting introduced to that. Hopefully it drops some good stuff. Flocks of Rappies might appear near mischief symbols. Okay, so near the symbols, they might appear. So that's probably where you want to look out for them. Rappy suit mini, probably from the Emperor Rappy. Okay, there's the mag. Eh. So there's the stamps. Yeah, evil orbit plus weapon camo. So it looks exactly like evil eclipse, but just not. Oh, yeah, I'm guessing it's going to be like the same. Just a different look. So yeah, daytime exploit where you do 2.5% more damage during the day. Um, I don't remember if like in the battle dias or whatever, if time has a factor, but this, this might be huge. Um, and just getting extra damage because daytime is like two thirds of the day versus, um, nighttime. Let's see if I can pause it. All right. So there's the Arku mommy hug. Uh, innocent stickers. Looks like it's a lot of the Arkuma stuff. Evolution devices. Camos. See, I'm guessing a lot of that is going to come from some sort of like suppression quest or UQ. Persona and NGS specs. Nice. And Motoy. Oh, yeah. Nice. Bring some of that stuff back. And a lot of Motoy. House players will like that. Nice stamps. And Matoy's weapon camo. And personas. Okay. Color variant effects, yeah. Popular PSO2 weapons are back as a compound weapon camo. So like um a whole bunch of weapons for like different 
weapon types. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's an interesting take with weapon camos. Yeah, they're all combined into one. That's really nice. Evergreen style AC scratch. Sci-fi kimono. Not too bad, not too bad. Kind of looks similar to some of the other stuff we've had before. It's like an actual kimono. Nice. Those are yeah, as I say, like I feel like some people wouldn't like that. Good thing, thing you can turn off with the ornament. Actually looks dope. Kind of reminds me of um, some of the base game stuff. Tarakatan. Yeah, that looks nice. I'll probably be using that myself, at least for a little bit, if I can. Star Seat. Weapon Maintenance. Not terrible emotes. Not terrible. And Gesture. <laughs> Doing some Naruto stuff. We have a Ninja Dash. Or Move. Ooh. Okay, that's the scratch count bonus. Okay, so this is a limited time quest. A trap in the forest, the 13th. A series of boss enemies throughout regions with Traspo, a member of the transport team in this quest. So this looks like on Tutorial Island. Even players who haven't made it to return or Kavaris can get into on the action. Nice. So say so you go from region to region. You know how much uh bosses? Rock Bear Geo. Okay, so you get to use the mobile cannon in there. You get a chance to get the Emperor Rappy. Okay, so it's, it's just like the last season event where you get a chance to find a captain, but yeah, we'll see how uh, much that chance actually is. New mission pass, the 13th. Let's see, personal shop use, of course. Uh, another motion change. New mag. Units. Units from PSO2 now available as accessories. Oh, I was going to say, I thought it was like units uh, that were going to come from base game that you could actually like use. It's an SG Scratch Polar Raiment. Oh, there's Ina's outfit. I can get that. I'm guessing you can get all the Power Rangers outfits too. Yeah. Pretty sure people will be eating this stuff up. I can even be the grandpa too. Nice. Ooh, you can get the their weapons as a weapon camo. Those would be nice to use. Stamps. I, I, I never really use the finger, like the hand poses. Twin machine guns pose. Nice. Robot at work. <laughs> Beautiful. Take a trip down memory lane with the Revival AC Scratch Ticket Oracle Revival. In celebration okay, so I don't think they mentioned this. Of PSO2, outfits, emotes, and hair sales in NGS specs that were previously released in the Oracle Renewal Collection 1 through 5 will be available once again. In addition, stamps of popular characters from PSO2 will be making a comeback, so make sure to check them out too. Nice. Rappies have been known to pop up near mischief symbols when dread enemies are defeated, so keep your eyes peeled. Okay, so near mischief symbols when dread enemies are defeated. Okay, so that's when they'll spawn. That's probably why that dread enemies are spawning faster, so you can get these Rappies to appear more often. Um, so this might be some sort of like connected farm if the Emperor Rappies or these Rappies give something good. 
because they did say that it's like a whole bunch of different rappies. As you can see here, there's like the snow one, uh, the one with like flowers on its head, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So they might have different drops, um, like different exploits uh, or whatever else. Although rare, you may even encounter the all too familiar Emperapi from PSO2 in an all new Seramo Emperapi getup celebrating the 10th anniversary. Defeating these will reward you with Strugman item drops. The spawn interval for dread enemies will be reduced from 10 minutes to 5 minutes during this event. Alright, so basically the time gets cut in half for dread enemies. And disappointingly, it sounds like Emperapis are only dropping Strugments, maybe? <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll have to see, because like that Rappi mini suit is coming from somewhere, right? So I'm guessing that's the Emperor Rappi, or at least the other Rappis around it. If it's just Strugments, then it isn't exactly worth, but uh, they probably can be killed very easily anyway, so it's like, uh, might as well if you're doing dreads. The interval will remain this way even after the event. It also sounds like that the dread enemies will just spawn faster permanently now. <laughs> so instead of the 11 minute time or 10 minute time, they will now always spawn on a 5 minute timer which is a huge difference and can make dread farming way, way better. Um, I wonder if this also applies to ancients since they're kind of on that same timer. It doesn't specifically say here, but uh, yeah, dreads might return as a farm that people uh, will do more often. Okay, so it sounds like in the seasonal shop there will be some blizzardium. I don't know how much there will be. I doubt there will be like a ton in there. But uh, that'll be another way to get Blizzardium for at least a, a small amount of time. But it isn't like a permanent change like we were hoping to see. It's just something that's limited time just for now. Additionally, the seasonal weapon this time around is the Evolar Bit series. You can exchange your Kavaris Expedition prep tickets for these weapons, which are an awesome color variant of the Evol Eclipse series. Okay, so it looks like you can get rid of some of your extra Kavaris prep tickets if you've kept any to uh, get this evil orbit series, which is, like I said, uh, just basically the same exact weapon, just in a different color, I guess. <laughs> Something for players that didn't get the tickets before can get in this uh, shop. The Revival SG Scratch Ticket, called for Ark's Revival, will be bringing back lots of items from the past NGS SG Scratch Tickets. Okay, so they're doing a second SG scratch to kind of like at the same time where there's going to be stuff that like if you missed out, then you'll be getting this stuff. <laughs> of course, like there's going to be Retem in this as well. I don't know why we had Retem for months and months, uh, but like we'll be able to get stuff from like Alio and other previous uh, SG scratches, which would be pretty nice. What's more, there will also be a free version that you can play 10 times a day during the sale period. 10 times a day for free. Not too bad. Okay. That's huge. AC Scratch Ticket. 10th Anniversary Oracle Memories brings back popular accessories, hairstyles, emotes, and more PSO2 spec items. So, so there's going to be another revival scratch too. The Oracle Memories SP scratch ticket, a free version containing the same items except for the scratch count bonuses, will also be available. Players with battle power 1,682 or greater get one Oracle Memories SP scratch ticket every day during this sale period. So make sure you log in daily. So it looks like you can get some free items from this, even though it is an AC scratch. So it seems like a lot of these tickets during the spent AC or SG, you'll be getting a lot of free items. So make sure to log in between uh, like this July event, because this is like pretty huge if you want like a whole bunch of cosmetics and don't want to spend like a whole bunch of money. So yeah, this is the later half of July. Second half of the event. Another field race, okay. They're going pretty hard with these field races, but I don't know how many people are going to actually play them. <laughs> and they're still not using the floating boards, which is an interesting take. It's just more tasks, more 
items. There's like an idol there. Yummy ice cream idol. Okay. Star gems. Basically all the usual stuff. Nice. Another AC scratch, the original creation C. Not too bad. Oh my god, beautiful. Oh, well, marshmallow. I think everybody's gonna want that thing. Is there a lot of like plain outfits? That's different. Oh my god, that's pretty revealing too, Jesus. Got the little bells and everything, nice. Ooh. Little orb, got the antlers thing. Kinda like, uh, Falls accessories. Oh, the void. Calisthenics. And a little cat on the back, sit-ups, okay. Oh my god. Nice. World Trials, okay. So a good uh, spot to get some star gems. 27th. Okay, all solar graces are now the same color, so you don't have to worry about getting, you know, gold and silvers, you know, going out of your way for that. You can just go straight for getting stellar graces. Okay, so you can find Pentalite, Arms Refiners, but not Blizzardium. They did not specify that. They did say scales, but no Blizzardium. What's more, the drop rate for augment capsules will be improved as well. In addition to what we saw in the trailer, we'll be releasing two new revival AC scratch tickets starting July 27th. Some more revival scratches. Okay. So it seems like this month is a lot of you know, celebrating. Yeah, so too, of course, you know, 10th year anniversary. So it seems like a lot of scratches are coming out where they're bringing back some of the base game kind of favorites or summer theme. Next up, we have a sneak peek of the new class that's coming in. Oh, finally, here's the class. Summoner Gunblade. Here we go. Please take a look. New class is here. Oh. That looks like a harmonizer to me. Meet the... Waker. Okay. I mean, it looks like Summoner, though. I mean, they're calling it something else. I mean, that looks like a pet to me. Okay, I think it's what I guessed uh, before. Or it's kind of based off of... Raylan, the enemy, to where, like... I don't think Waker's gonna have, like, actual pets anymore. They're just gonna attack with... Pets ish, but they're not gonna have like their own pets. Yeah, it looks like they're just kind of like summoning them out of nowhere. I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah, they're using like different attacks or PAs with them. I guess we'll see when they dive into it more. I mean, it looks like a pretty fun class to play. We got this little shield thing there that's shooting as well. And it looks like it changes. Oh. <laughs> they also have that again. Oh my god. Is that gonna nuke? Is that gonna nuke people? Just like before? Ooh, is that the photon blast? Hell yeah. Kind of reminds me of Pokemon Trainer from Smash. Coming in August. Okay. I mean, based on what you, you say here. Okay, see, yeah, it's different from Summoner. It's similar, but it's not going to be the same. Unlike pets, familiars do not need to be raised. So I'm guessing, like, you don't really um, level up or need to get eggs for these. Like, you just kind of have them. The name of this new class is the so you can interchange them as well. While it shares some similarities with the Summoner class from PSO2, there are some differences that make it quite unique. Okay. Wakers use the same weapon as Summoners, the Harmonizer. Mm -hmm. 
However, instead of having a pet companion that they command during combat, players will be able to enjoy aggressive co-op battles while they awaken a photon life form called a familiar, while also using their harmonizer to attack enemies. The gameplay is completely different from that of the summoner, and different corresponding familiars are called upon to attack or defend when the character uses photon arts or weapon actions. Okay, so it seems like it still has like a lot of versatility though, just like what Summoner had. But I feel like a lot of people are going to be, I don't know, mixed on this change, especially for those that played Summoner in base game, because I feel like this really like makes it more casual of a class or kind of like dumbs it down. But we'll see like what kind of stuff they'll include here to handle both close and long-range combat by making good use of the three types of familiars. Mm -hmm. Wakers also have an active skill that allows familiars to attack in coordination with each other for an ultimate attack. That sounds really cool. On the other hand, there is no need to feed or raise the familiars. Yeah, we got rid of that system. You can make them stronger by leveling up and enhancing your equipment. I mean, I kind of like that change because it was like... Honestly, for me, it was like too much. Like there was definitely a lot of customizability with it. I feel like it just added another layer that didn't necessarily need to be there. Please be aware that you will not be able to use your PSO2 pets in NGS. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, we're planning a campaign following the Waker release where you can get an NGS mag form with the same appearance as your PSO2 pet if its level is 80 or higher. Okay, so you can get a mag form of your pet from base game if it's 80 or higher. So I guess those of you who did that in the past or want to do that until uh, they, this class comes out, you can try to get those mag forms. Right, so this is the extra event information. Right, so this is kind of like everything that's going on. Okay, so the six is kind of when most of this already starts. Um, so the whole anniversary event lasts until the 3rd of August. This is probably when, or near to when Waker is going to release. There's a lot of campaigns going on, so you might kind of want to, like, take a screenshot of this, or they might have it on the website. Who knows? But it also looks like there's pre-announced quests, a seasonal world trial at the same time. There's, like, a whole bunch of campaigns. A lot of, like, free items, which I am surprised. 10 a day free SG Scratch for, like, a week. That's insane. So 70 items, basically, and then like a daily beyond. Um, yeah, we'll see what she has to say, though, about the rest. In addition to the 10 a day free SG scratch and the play daily exclusive scratch ticket mentioned earlier, we have the use the salon to your heart's content campaign and a special boost campaign, making this the biggest campaign we've ever had. During the use the salon to free access to all menus accessible through the ooh one you'll also be getting a free color change pass once a week. So that's gonna last like the whole month then it looks like. So you don't have to use any salon pass during this time. So you probably want to change as much as you can or as much as you want during this period period to get everything just right that you just have been uh you know not doing because you don't have these salon passes or don't want to spend them. But yeah, also color change passes for any outfits that you want to change up. Really nice. Now, here's some info on the boost event you've all been waiting for. The first boost event, also starting on July 6th, will include enhancement success rate plus 40%, and augmentation success rate plus 10%. So is that just for Evil Orbit? Because, like, this is a separate booster here, so I'm guessing... There are going to be double stacked boosters for that that week. Why not take this opportunity to enhance your favorite gear? Okay, so that's nice. At the same time, there will also be an enhancement boost exclusive to the Evolorbit series. Okay. I mentioned earlier in the hot That's good. The second boost event starting on July 20th will be on par with Ultra PSO2 Day. Enjoy EXP earned plus 20% and rare drop rate plus 50% boost for two whole weeks and take advantage of this opportunity to tackle as many quests as you can. 
All right, so this sounds like it's uh, the grind time kind of period. The end of July the 20th and leading into August. There are also a variety of other events and campaigns in the PSO2 10th anniversary campaign. Be sure to check out the special site for more details. All right, so it sounds like those things are going to be on the website. Um, nice to meet you campaign. A login bonus get up to 400 star gems. It's after two replay campaign. So maybe base game replay? That'd be interesting. Actually doing something with base game for once. Starting July 6th, special item sets including PSO2 10th anniversary exchange tickets will be available at both the AC and SG shops. Okay, so you get extra tickets that way. Deemed for popular PSO2 items such as Siren Wings and Harriet's Barrette. Premium sets, sets of boost items with various bone and augment capsules, and more will be available for a discounted price. In the AC purchase campaign that is also starting July 6, players can earn accessories such as the Sunny Parasol and the Region Mag earrings. Plus N, EX, EXP earned plus 50%, depending on how much AC they purchase. Okay. Let's top the charts for the 10th anniversary with Halfa's next top hit contest. Arcs from all corners of Halfa will be asked to vote via a survey to pick a song that they would like to see lyrics for from a list of popular PSO2 and NGS instrumental songs. The first place winning two will be revamped with vocals. This survey opens on June 29th, so be sure to vote for your favorite track that you want to see put into words. I feel like there's like a ton of tracks that that could include. Um, I wonder if like if they are remixing these with vocals, if they're going to be somehow added as concerts in game at a later date. That would be like pretty nice for certain songs. Absolutely. All right. So it looks like uh, this is like the 10th anniversary manga um that's coming that i'm guessing those items that we saw those manga memories in the those two limited time quests with the holographs are going to come from this manga specifically so there might be items that we could get that are in here that uh we just don't know about yet that we could use in like some sort of exchange or something all right so the anime will be shown on the youtube channel and in game for like a limited time for free for any of you that have not watched these yet i just want to re-watch it so it looks like they're going to be showing off this on stage thing, which I didn't even know about. Apparently, it was in 2014. Yeah, there will no, not be an English dub, so it'll still be like in Japanese. But uh, it looks like you can use captions or auto translate to get the words. It's this little thing where you can make like ARCS IDs um, that you can kind of just like share online. Um, it looks like there will be a tweet that you can use, hashtag PSO2 underscore 10th, uh, to potentially get star gems uh, later on. There's the Anime Expo booth with some different items they can get IRL and in-game. But you need to be able to get to this LA Convention Center during these times, which is coming pretty soon. So, like, I, I doubt a lot of people will be able to get this, but... Um, I'm hoping that these items can also be sold in the personal shop, just in case some people that actually do go to this event... Um, like, don't want these and put it on the shop. It might be quite expensive, Maceto wise but, like, if you can't make it to this event, you might get lucky enough to be able to snatch one of these. So it looks like the next headline is the 26th of July, where Hero Rai will be back, and we can also get the Operation Report during the headline, because they've been doing these Operation Reports in their official Discord instead, which is kind of a weird spot for that. All right, so they'll be talking about more projects during that time, and also, we'll finally be getting a roadmap so we know what's going on for the rest of the year, hopefully. Well, that was a lot to take in. Um, the new class, Waker, was definitely interesting to see. I'm guessing a lot of people weren't expecting that. I was kind of thinking, like, we got Raylin, which I'm like, that's very close to what Summoner's kind of doing. So I figured there's going to be something different with that. And they also changed the symbol in-game on the harmonizer to look more like a music note. So I was kind of guessing that Summoner was going to be changed in some way, just not this 
drastically. Of course, we'll be getting more information about it uh, in the next headline, so we'll kind of see how big the differences actually are. But yeah, other than the class though, like I'm very surprised of how many free cosmetics or just cosmetics in general that we're going to be getting in this next month. So many revival scratches or like things change in NGS specs or even some new things with original creations, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm most surprised by the 10 free cosmetics that you get in the beginning of the month per day. Like that is just insane to me. And I think this is like a once in a lifetime or, you know, we won't see this like ever again, most likely. So take advantage of it of it for sure um and also look forward to all the campaigns and boosts and kind of keep an eye on it as they'll definitely have it on their website or i'll keep you updated about it as well yeah hopefully you guys liked the video and i'll see you in the next one peace